Hey everyone, Heather Earls here. Thanks for coming on today's episode. This week, like every week, I'll be talking about natural living and healthy tips that will get you to rethink how you live and what products or habits you can easily change to better your life. So let's get started. Hey everyone and welcome to Urban Wisdom. Our topic this week is the importance of having balance in our lives. Now, I want to read, um, if you go to heatherearls.com slash balance, you're going to see this picture, but it says balance is the key to everything. What we do, think, say, eat, feel, they all require awareness and through this awareness we can grow. Now more than ever, we have a choice of how we spend our time or balance out what's important to us in our lives. Decisions and choices that you make now will not only impact your future, but those you support and care about. Balance is the key to keeping a sane mind, and if you have a family, a sane household. Everyone craves time and attention, and if you own home or a possession of any kind, they also need attention or maintenance to hold their value and our quality. So how do we do that? How do we maintain balance while accomplishing what it is that we need to do and want to do? Now what happens when we tip the scale or neglect to balance in our lives? Well, my best friend and I were talking about this the other day. We both have personal health, business, and life goals that are all due at the same time. And instead of balancing as we should, we've been putting in longer hours. Did that help? No. What happened as a result was our husbands and children, which are our first priorities, weren't getting the time they needed and overall felt neglected. It's so easy to lose sight of the things that are going great even fine when we're led by passion or drive to do something, especially if that something is making us money or moving us in a social position that we feel is needed to advance our careers. Now we think the things that are going great will continue, but that's not always the case. The things that are successful in our life, whether that be relationships, health, or our home, are usually the things we put time and effort into. However, once we stop, they start to unravel or degrade. Now, how much time are we talking? Well, from experience, I've learned that it does not take very long at all. You've all realized how hard you work to accomplish a task, and then in one moment, something or someone can destroy everything. It's kind of like a child toppling over building blocks as soon as you stack them. In short, it takes hard work and effort to make something great, but very little time to erase it if you're not putting in a continual effort. Now, don't be discouraged. There are simple ways in which any person can maintain balance in their lives while living a tremendous life. You may not agree with all of these, but I would encourage you to still read them or listen to them here because there might be a time when you can help someone else in their struggle to keep that steady balance in which you can offer advice based on their needs and not just yours. Now, as a people lover and health advocate, I am always looking for ways to improve not only my life, but those around me, as should you. So you guys, what are some ways in which you can help balance your life? Well, number one is spirituality. You've all heard the scripture, there is a season for everything. I don't know why, but the scriptures always rub me the wrong way. Maybe it's because a lot of people use it to make excuses why they don't get something done. Instead of balance, they just quit saying it's not the right season. I see what the scripture is saying and I'm not judging those who use it. My girlfriends use it all the time. It's, I just merely want to say it a different way. Or I should say, interpret it a different way. God gives us different jobs or tasks at different times in our life. With the knowledge, we will complete them. So there, I kind of feel better instead of just saying, hey, it's a season. I guess I'm not supposed to be doing it. Well, if you feel like you're supposed to be doing something, you need to just get it done. I believe God will reward our efforts when we are mindful and align them with his word. The mind of a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. That's Proverbs 16, 9. Now, this is a verse I recite every morning, reminding me to keep balance, but still set and meet goals for this time, this day, this moment, and this season. But again, you guys, there's a difference between 
wanting something and getting it done because you feel like that's what you're supposed to be doing, um, but not just in a selfish manner. Now, if you're going about and saying, I want this and I want that, and I'm going to get it now, that's a different attitude and not one I am encouraging, okay? So don't don't mix that up. Now, when I control and go outside of God's plan, which I was just talking about, even for a good cause, I am stressed and always end up exhausted. But when I let God take control, I have a quiet spirit and am able to be a blessing to myself, family, and everyone else in range while still meeting my goals. Although we live in a hurry up or get left behind kind of world, just remember who controls all time. Every day, hour, and minute, God is ultimately in control and will help us meet our goals no matter what kind of world or time we live in. Again, though, make it about, <clears throat> excuse me, him or other people and how you're helping them and not just a selfish attitude about, I want this. Now, the second thing is time scheduling. There is no need to neglect your priorities or duties to accomplish a goal or a dream. All you need is to be a little wiser with your time and energy, which is important anyways. Don't say this is not the right season. Instead, say, I have been given this passion now, and I can carry it out by being purposeful with my time and by creating balance so it doesn't affect my priorities. So here's an example. This is kind of like my normal day. Um, get up at 5, and then from 5 to 8, I will read my Bible. Um, you know, just say positive things, whether it's about my family, my husband, so affirmations, exercise, and I work on the computer. Then from 8 to 12, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, got a frog in my throat. Um, I teach the kids school because we homeschool. And then 12 to 1 is lunch. 1 to 2 is 1 to 2. We continue with the school. 2 to 4 is straightening up the house or work on a small project to upkeep, like, you know, trim needs fixed or something like that. 4 to 6, I plan, start, and make supper. 6 to 7, we eat and clean up. 7 to 9 in the summer, it's usually chore time or vegetable picking. In the winter, it's family time. And then from 9 o'clock on, um, I guess, bedtime for the kids, and then I work on my writing until I go to bed. Now, my day ends differently depending on the seasons, but I encourage at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep because that is healthy. Now, this is just a rough draft, but you get the general idea of how time management can help you balance yet still help you get everything accomplished. Not everyone will have the same list. I realize seasons change with jobs, moving, and school. But with balance and making a schedule, you will always accomplish what you set out to do. <clears throat> Sorry, you guys. Okay, number three, words of affirmation. Now, what we say in our mind or out loud has purpose and perhaps is the most significant effect on our lives yet. If you say it, it will come true. Whether that be a good thing or a bad depends on the thoughts and words themselves. Because of that, be very careful what you allow in your mind, heart, and soul, as it will eventually turn you into that person if you are thinking about it constantly and saying it out loud. Now, I'm not kidding, you guys. If you don't want something to happen, then don't think about it or say it. Now, number four, live for the moment. Balancing life sometimes means living in the moment. Unexpected events or opportunities come along, and if we're too busy or only do things by the book, we'll miss them. Part of life is enjoying those moments of surprise without feeling guilty or it's not on the schedule, so I can't. You guys, this both affects, say, say someone comes along, and you just feel like you need to help them. It could be opening a door. It could be seeing, you know, an elderly lady and you're going to help her get her groceries into her car. I'm talking little moments like that in bigger moments. Um, and if you say, oh, that's going to cost me five minutes. I'm not going to get my errands done. You need to stop and rethink that. And or if someone asks you to do something, it could be a huge opportunity for you. Um, think about, you know, what you're doing. You're helping somebody else. Is this really important? And then don't be afraid to take those, okay? Now, just a special note, if you're married, you need to talk with your spouse and explain as some opportunities, like bigger opportunities, may not be right for you as a couple. If you need to leave the ones you love behind, 
then I would suggest letting go of whatever it is and rethink your priorities. Because not every opportunity is a good opportunity. The grass is not always greener on the other side. Sometimes you just need to water your own lawn. Now, number five, take care of your body. I know better than anyone what a toll stress in life can do to your body if you don't take care of it. Forget living for the moment or time scheduling. If your body and health suffer and can't perform, then you will struggle with the simplest of tasks. Believe it or not, your body can break down. It's hard to think of that when we're feeling strong and at our peak. Remember though, what we don't take care of and can, it will decline and health is no exception, you guys. So balance by making time for self-care to include eating healthy, getting enough sleep, to give your body enough energy to start and finish each day. Now six is connecting. Having a connection with someone is very special. It could be a spouse or a friend, but a true connection can help you sift through life's good times and bad. Now is there a person or tactic you can use to keep yourself supported? motivated and focused in those hard times, I highly recommend connecting and sharing your inner process with someone. Find someone who can help you challenge your inner demons and celebrate your little accomplishments. Now, you guys, I want to read another um, little picture I have on here. It says, we are like islands in the sea, separate on the surface, but connected in the deep. That's by William James. Now, number seven, prepare and plan. You need to know what it is you want in life before you can find the balance in it. What is your inner stuff that will try to keep you from sticking to your plan? Fears, worries, doubts, negative self-talk, what? Can you specify the things you will say to yourself to push you off track? For example, just one more bite. I'll start eating better tomorrow. Make a list and then focus on daily habits to accomplish and overcome them. Let's move on to number eight, overcome defeat. Never stop doing or excelling because something happened. Trials don't come so you can give in or up. They teach us and help us to balance and manage our life as we hold on to our dreams and goals. God has instilled in you all the tools you need to succeed in life if only you believe in yourself. Now, belief in overcoming defeat are a powerful tool and one that will empower you to succeed and create a happier life for yourself and your family. Now, you guys, I want to be careful here because success looks different to different people. And I'm not saying, you know, if you pray hard enough or if you believe in it hard enough, you're going to make a million dollars, you're going to drive the best cars and have the most beautiful house. That's not the success I'm talking about. I'm talking about the success of a happy soul, of you know, my family is happy. I am happy. You feel good in the place you're at. Um, You know, if you have a, a great house, fantastic. If you drive a nice car, fantastic. But the success I'm focusing on is inner success of, um, like I said again, a happy soul. So reflect and reset. As I stated at the beginning, life gets away sometimes and we need to reflect and reset to get our balance right again. Don't wait until it's too late. Take time once a week or every day if you need to to evaluate the things that are going on in your mind and soul. Do you feel on a level plane or do you feel out of control? If you feel perfectly content, continue on your path. If you don't, think of a time when you did and do a reset to turn yourself around. Balance means that you have a handle on the various elements in your life. Also, you don't feel that your heart or mind is being pulled too hard in any direction. More often than not, you feel calm, grounded, clear-headed, and motivated. And that, my friends, is the overall goal. Now, number 10, take action. Nothing happens in life unless you take the steps and make it an action. Effort equals balance and success. Now, a little recap, you guys. Number one, spirituality. Two, schedule your time. Three, words of affirmation. Four, living in the moment. Five, take care of your body. Six, connecting. Seven, prepare and plan. Eight, overcome defeat. 
9. Reflect and reset. 10. Take action. Now with that, I'm going to end and encourage you to find yourself in balance in your season of life. Love you, my friends, and have a healthy week. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Urban Wisdom and Natural Living. Tune in next week where I'll broadcast live every Monday morning at 8 a.m. If you miss it live, hold those tears and head on over to my blog, which is heatherearls.com. That's Heather, E-A-R-L-E-S.com. There you can have 24-7 access or right here on iTunes. If you want to follow me on social media, you'll find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. Have a healthy week. Thank you.